Okay, so I'm trying these wings, even though they're not really the color I want. I feel like they're the closest to the uh, the exact angle. But you'll see there's there's nothing that there's no reference that's just perfectly exact. That would be far too easy. But I'm going to cut it out to see because if nothing else, I could use this as kind of a base layer for my wings. There we go. Get rid of this chunk. And it's like a flying hairball right now. It's kind of nice. Okay, so now I want to look at my sketch and see. Well, I wanted my wings to extend out beyond that tip. So let's see what I can get away with transforming it and stretching it. So basically it means that my creature has a larger collarbone than the parrot I'm stealing it from. So instead of trying to just stretch it, I'm going to split it. And I'm going to hit Command X, which is the cut function shortcut. And what that does is it deletes it, but it holds it on the clipboard so that when I hit Command V, it will paste it back on. It pasted it here in the middle, so then I can actually move it where I think it needs to go. Like so. Let's see if that matches my sketch. Almost. So let's warp that now. So I took that one reference of the, of the wings all together and made it into two references. And that is working better. Okay, so that's one approach for the wings. Another approach, the wings that I liked the best were the ones of, of this parrot. They weren't quite as sharp, but still pretty darn sharp and plenty big. But the problem was the angle, right? But now that I know what the angle should be, <coughs> I might be able to make these work. So lasso around them. They're also fairly easy to um, to cut out being on that soft blue sky. Save it for good measure. I'm bringing in really big reference here. All right, so you'll see that they're a little blurry compared to the other wings. Those are nice and sharp. He's a little blurry. And that's just because they were, they were shot while moving or just vibrating, basically. Not a high enough camera speed or not enough light. I can try just very subtly. I don't like to do this, but I can try this, this sharpen filter. And I like to use Smart Sharpen. I'm going to make this very subtle. Keep everything down pretty low. See if it will give me a preview. It's not going to process fast enough to give me a preview, but I, if I say OK, it's going to um, sh sharpen the contrast at the edges. And I'm hoping especially at the edges between the, the tips of the feathers and the sky. That will make it easier to select out. And it will just make that element fit a little bit better with the rest of my, rest of my creature's textures. Now remember, I have to connect the wing to here, so, so I'm going to be cutting it up. All right, what other components do I still have in my reference? Well, that's working. I have the talons to work with. I have the possum tail. It's going to come underneath. These are fun things. I'm going to try to get them in there by today, just roughly, because by the end of today, we want to have all the components kind of attached to one chassis, and then I can crop it down, and then I can just work on refining and cleaning it up next class before we turn it in. 
But other embellishments I brought in, I thought birds of paradise, bringing some um, flower elements might work for the tips of the wings. Again, to make it seem somewhat believable and familiar, but exotic at the same time. So you can see how long the smart sharpen filter takes. But I'm crossing my fingers, it will be helpful. And I'll zoom in and I'll see. And you you can tell when you're looking at real res, at full resolution. So if I view it at 100%, that's what I, where I am right now. It will actually tell me in the bottom left-hand corner. <coughs> that shows me the pixels. If I hit Command Z, it should show me what it was without Smart Sharpen. So it does not make a hugely dramatic difference. So I'm going to keep it. Can't hurt as long as it's not obviously too much. Okay, let's select out this space around it. Oh, did I smart sharpen the wrong thing? I might have. I hope not. Okay, just because I was concerned I might have been on the had the wrong layer selected when I did the sharpening because I couldn't really tell much of a difference. Let's see. Oh, uh, there you can tell. So it's very subtle but it is helpful. It sharpens that delineation. So I like that. I'm going to use it. All right, now let's get rid of this background. Oh, it's so easy to select. Such a joy. Now the reason in um, special effects for movies, in the behind the scenes for DVDs, they do so much green screen work is precisely for this reason. So it's easy to cut out the actors or whatever it is from the background. Not that it can't be done without, but it makes it easy. Now those wings in some ways are a more dramatic silhouette than these, right? But the anatomy doesn't work the right way. So I'm going to do the same thing I did with the white wings. I'm going to separate them. I'm going to hit Command X and then Command V to paste it as a new layer. So this is separating one reference into two references. Then I'm going to transform this and make it fit my anatomy a little bit better. But that's a much more dramatic back wing. Let's leave that in there. Let's grow this one a little bit. Oh, and you see with the white feathers working with it, this this might have some potential. Yep, and then the slope needs to be a little different, the angle of the wing. So I'm going to use warp, but still try to keep it so I can transition. This gives me the the value and the color variation I'm looking for. but I'm going to make it match my anatomy. So that leaves me with the other white wing. What can I do with it? Well, if I transform it bigger... Consent of the wings. Consent of the wings. Consent of the wings to make it match. I'm a big fan of getting consent. <laughs> So wherever possible. But I, I actually had tried to get reference from Pixabay, where Pixabay is like going to a bar where they've already given consent, right? I thought you were going to say, I actually tried to get consent. But this, this conversation is going to get us into trouble. So. It's on video, so it's, it's, on, it's on video, so it you is. just have consent. This put it like an animated version of so, but I wasn't able to find all the references I need. I need to use Google Images. And you can see some of them had watermarks, right? And that's a clear way that you don't have consent to use their image. So what do you have to do, morally speaking? Edit out the watermarks. watermarks. Well, not only that, you have to transform it completely into your own, your own imagery. So that's 
That's what we're really trying to do by using at least five different references and really making it match our sketch. So we're not just, you know, pasting images together. We're changing the colors. We're altering it. We have a vision that's completely our own. Can I make my head pitch off like red? Yeah, you can absolutely change color. And that's something we're going to play with. I'm making it nothing, bro. As we're refining elements next time. Oh, no. Wrong one. All right, I'm going to shrink this back wing a little. I grew the white behind it so that we get that kind of layering. All right. This is working. Now, I haven't played with levels or adjustments on, on either the white wings or the, the dark wings. And that would be a good thing to do. Okay, so now, in order to help them work together, I'm going to play with levels, starting with the wings on top, hand color balance, and then I'm going to have to connect that wing to the joint of my body. Start with levels. You know, their darkness and lightness is actually pretty good. So then go to color balance. And sometimes you just have to, to play with the sliders to kind of see what direction they need to go. If any. <laughs> Because these colors are actually matching pretty well with the temperature of what I have. Now with the white wings behind, I'm definitely going to limit their, their brightness. So I go to image adjustment levels. And instead of playing with the, the mid-tone slider, which I can do a little bit to darken the contrast, I'm going to limit the highlights. So they're, they're a little bit grayer in the background. Not quite so bright. And then I might use the burn tool as well, not on the highlights, but on the midtones, where they're overlapping. Okay. Same thing with here, image adjustment levels, darken the midtones a little bit, limit the highlights. All right. And then also start getting rid of any any leftover edges I don't need. Okay, now here's the, the tricky bit. I'm going to keep that wing in the background, but I'm going to move this wing up above the chest layer because I need to connect it with that shoulder. And I like that I have that red to help kind of show it. So how do I do that? I use a soft 100% opaque eraser. Erase away the hard edges. Except where I need the hard edges. Right? I'm going to try transforming it with warp and just kind of scooting it in a little bit to create that shoulder joint right there that I need without losing the structure of the wing itself. And that's why I have that white wing behind to help. So we're getting close there. <laughs> Good. Now I can go in with a lower opacity eraser 
and start transitioning some of these elements. So that, that red